been a month we didn't speak uh, with Mandy, so it's good to come back and share some things about trading psychology, some things that you might know or not know yet, and how to really use the mindset better in trading. So Mandy, how's it going today? Yeah, really well. Thank you, Etienne. How about you? Awesome. Doing very well. Well, actually, I'm traveling right now, but uh, in Thailand, yeah. COVID is not doing so well, but I'm doing well, so that's totally fun. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I noticed so you in a different wanna... place at the moment, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I all like Thai style uh, house, so quite different. But nice. Yeah. Nice. We'll manage it. Awesome. So, what did you want to focus on today? What's the topic that you want to kind of talk about and, and really dive into? So, you can see I'm just looking at the other side of my screen. What I wanted to talk about, I saw this um, tweet from from a very well known and, and great um, um, trading coach. And, um, and he said, so it is an important characteristic of top traders to really understand yourself and to um, that you can't create um, great results if you don't know yourself intimately. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it's got its place. And, you know, I'm obviously working on trading psychology, so um, I'm totally into that. But I don't think it's to be an end all, um, knowing yourself, because I know so many traders who don't know themselves, but they create epic results, um, especially the more professional guys, the guys who trade um, in prop. They haven't done much work on themselves, but still, you know, they, they, they make millions on a trade. So it can't be the end all or be all as it was described in that in that tweet and and this is what i wanted to discuss today you know what are your thoughts and um share some um insights from from other traders as well what do you reckon awesome. very nice yeah so i guess understanding yourself is big and for me that has a huge part in what i'm doing right now but the other part is how do you fix it and how do you act properly with that knowledge of yourself because you could be making a mistake and you could be kind of screwing up all the time but if you don't know how to fix it then you're still stuck at the same place. Yeah. Do you really need to intimately know yourself, though? Well, you what kind of need even, to... What does it even mean? Let's start there. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's a good point. So if you guys want to come in the chat, let us know what you think that means. And we'll just begin with that. And I'll let Mandy mm. go and kind of explore that. So, yeah. Mandy, what, what do you think you need to, to, to know yourself? What do you think that that means? So, to to the extent as it was um, um, written in that tweet, it is almost like you have to know um, everything about your values, and your beliefs, and uh, because it's the work I know uh, this guy is doing. Um, right. So, knowing um, um, your strengths and your weaknesses, and I, what I know from many traders that I work with who trade on a very high level. They have no idea. They have no idea about their beliefs. They have no idea about their values. But um, knowing yourself is really, in my model of the world, understanding these these what your attitude is really. Okay. So yeah. there's been a lot of talk about people saying that if you don't know what your beliefs are in trading, that you will, you will not be able to to perform well or that, let's say, you, you want to make that amount of money so when you get closer to that money, then you'll be kind of screwing up and, and making more mistakes. Because so, your unconscious limiting beliefs would yes. interfere with your... Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. So then why isn't that good to understand who you are and, and understand yourself and your belief? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying... What I'm saying is that, like meditation, it is helpful. It is mm -hmm. great. It is useful for the one who is curious about it, but it's not crucial to succeed because if we take this um, this tweet in contrast on the flip side it is basically saying if you don't know yourself if you don't meditate what some say you can't succeed and this is what I, my beef is with you know um, yes it's great when you have an interest in exploring yourself but it doesn't mean that if you don't that you can't succeed mm. and this is what, what I see yeah, trading coaches talk about, which I think is wrong. That's a good point because I see a lot of people who, you know, you go online, you, you hear all these habits you should have as a trader or in any kind of field, you should meditate, you should do exercise, you should do this and that. 
and a lot of them are, are good and useful, but you don't yeah. have to do all of them to be able to be successful. I think it's it's the wrong mindset to be in. At least yeah. ha- these just for this habit of successful people to succeed, it doesn't really work that way that much. So I think that's a good reminder. Yeah, and and you know, I know a lot of successful people, highly successful people, not just in trading, in business, in sports, and um some they follow a really strengthened um a string string or str- um, strict um health regime and um you know routine and others they don't so you know i know traders who drink a lot who eat um eggs and bacon for breakfast who so who really eat unhealthy generally speaking and they're top traders right so um i know traders who are um in a bad mood all the time and complain about everything. So no positive thinking there, but you know, um, just work with a trader right now who, who trades maybe once a month and makes a few million dollars on a trade per month on, on that trade. That's all he does. I can tell you, he's not enlightened <laughs> and, and he sees that there's more potential for him. So that's why, why we are working together. But he has no interest in his beliefs and values and 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 knowing himself. So again, it is helpful, but it is not the be and end all for success. That's that's what I think. And and so I was asking um, um, Alba Capital Management on Twitter, who used to trade for Paul Tudor Jones, and um, so he knows a lot of highly successful traders. And I asked him about. Uh, about about that, if this is what um, the highly successful traders that he knows um, share that belief that they share that you have to know yourself. So, and he said it it's got its place, but the danger is blurring the lines between um, being a, a great trader and thinking that when you're in a drawdown, that um, trading psychology, knowing yourself, is going to get you out of that drawdown. And um, this is what I see, Etienne, where traders don't take responsibility for themselves, but they reach out and say, can you teach me how to be disciplined? Really asking, can you help me press that mouse button if I don't want to press that mouse button? Yeah. Also, uh, the, the issue with understanding yourself is that you could kind of start to create limiting beliefs about yourself. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm this person. I'm not that kind of person. I'm going to do this and that. And then you kind of stuck in that cycle of, not being able yeah. to, to to become better and to learn new things. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's like um, the self-image. So when someone has a self-image of I'm a loser, that is something that needs to be transformed. So I always say we only need to look at the two or three self-sabotaging patterns a trader has, and then we work on that. Everything else, keep all your flaws. Be negative, be grumpy, smoke, drink, eat chicken and chips. I don't care. That's not good for your health, but it doesn't mean that you can't be a great trader. So um, it's about, uh, this is the work that I did with um, Boris, for example, at TraderFest. Boris Schlossberg, he kindly allowed me to coach him live. And so Boris's pattern was that he gets bored easily and there is no setup according to his strategy. And then he sees something on the chart and he's like, oh, I wonder what that is like. And then he gets into a trade. It doesn't work out. Then he has a loss. And that loss then eats into his profits, which is a loss that was really not necessary um, because it wasn't part of his trading methodology. So what I worked with him on was him understanding that his behavior was actually not a self-sabotaging pattern. It was a behavior that is part of his strength. He's extremely curious. And he is extremely, like he said, when he was a little child, already from early age onwards, he always wanted to understand and explore and try out things. And this is what he does. This is also part of what makes him so successful as a trader um, nowadays. Now, he saw himself as someone who sabotages, who doesn't have control over his impulses, and he got really angry and annoyed at this behavioral pattern. Once he understood that this is his natural inclination, um, that he likes to explore and try out new things, now we can start looking at, okay, so what do we do with that so that it doesn't work as a sabotaging pattern, but as a supportive pattern in your trading? Yeah, so um, 
that is one example where I'm sure he has a lot of limiting beliefs and value conflicts and all, all, all that jazz, but it's not necessary. We only needed to look at this one piece of information that was um, stopping him to um, perform better. Does it make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense. So my first explanation was to ask you, well, if that doesn't really make, or if that doesn't make you to become successful, then what is? But I'm, I'm, I'm starting to think that there's not like one thing that can make you successful in trading. It's like a mix of different things. So what would you tell people that they should focus on? Like, that's one part, but what else should they kind of think about? If they already mastered understanding themselves. Or if yeah, they think it's so, like stupid to do it. So... That is a trap that I fell myself into and that kept me stuck for many, many years. Traders think, and that's the self-image thing, right? So I'm not um, good enough or I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. Um, I um, don't have what it takes. So why is it that traders have so much pain around losing? Like, you know, we lose so much money every day. We waste so much every day, money every day and, and we don't get upset about it. But then we lose $20 in trading. We do get upset about it. So it's not the money. It's the self-image. And uh, the self-image in a nutshell is I can't have what I want. I can't succeed in my trading. And whatever that means, right? So in detail. Um, so first, what we need to do is, or what, what the level I like working on is, not looking at where do you have limiting beliefs or where do you have value conflicts, but looking at how can you build yourself and create yourself so that you have the traits that every successful person has. And one of those traits is cutting your losses. If you can't cut your loss, then we need to work on that. And that's number one skill. So we go on um, live market replay and we practice cutting losses. So it becomes, becomes ingrained and it becomes a natural behavioral pattern. Number two, it is um, understanding where to cut your losses. And number three, it's understanding what is your self-sabotaging pattern all about? Why is it that you can't cut your loss? Where in the past were you um, punished for cutting a loss? And where in the past were you um, um, rewarded for not cutting your loss? And then let's transform that. All the other flaws you can keep. Does it make sense? Yes, it makes sense. I'm trying to cut a uh, spammer of Facebook. So I might take a second for that. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that makes sense. So that's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll, so if you have any questions, you can also comment in the chat. We'll make sure to answer mm -hmm. your questions fairly soon after. And we will to answer questions about mindset psychology. And we, we had a good comment here about uh, Ope, who we answered this question about last uh, like last month. So mm -hmm. uh, we told him to make some journals, see what happened before he was having issues. And it, it, it just it, it just isn't sad that that really helped him a lot. So that, that's good to hear. It's awesome. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, so, welcome so you know to what, Roberto. what we did with Ope was, oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, what you did ahead, with was, it's not about looking at where you suck. It's about what traits do you need to develop and can you develop so that you can do the job that you're here to do. That's all it is. That's that's the big difference. Awesome. Cool. Mm -hmm. So if I understand well, and if we could try to summarize this, especially you have to understand what you lack in and what's the big issue. And of course, a coach can help you do that for sure. And then you got to work on it. Basically, it, that's the the main thing is you got to work on it and try to fix it and find ways to become better and yeah. also practice it. The thing is, you know, um, as Einstein said, you can't fix um, the problems with the same mind that created those problems. So it is always easier when you have someone who looks at you from the outside and says, this is the pattern that you keep repeating. That's the only thing that you need to switch. And um, if you try to do that on your own, you can't see yourself from the outside. You can't be an, um, an observer of yourself. It's just not possible. 
And so that's why it's so much harder than if you want to work on your own on resolving those patterns or those self-sabotaging behaviors than if you have someone maybe in a group session, in a group context like you have, or, um, you know, interviews where we talk um, with traders who share about their challenges and then you see yourself in that challenge and you see how the other trader resolved it. Yeah, so that, that, that can be avenues. Yeah. And Bronx said, it's so true, it's hard to know what to fix by yourself because, yeah, I can't see myself from the back of my eyeballs. Yeah, and that's the value of a coach. So that definitely helps a lot. Yeah. 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 Awesome. So what are the essential questions when you have them in the chat? You can always kind of with your questions and we'll be able to cover that. Uh, yeah, the other thing I, I, I wanted to uh, ask you is, are there some kind of, tricks or, or ways you can start to figure out how you, uh, like what you lack in. Is it like some kind of ranking you could do to see like how you rank in different areas of trading and then understand what things you have to work on or? So, you know, let's look at someone who doesn't take um, their losses, right? Because that's the most mm -hmm. common problem that I come across. So how do you really work with that, on that? So number one, and this is not knowing yourself, right? This is understanding how you do this thing because everything we do in life, there's a strategy behind it. And so it's always the same. There's just it's, it's just this one way of what do I say to myself that makes it okay to stay in the losing trade? So really listen to your thoughts. And then you can go back and say, so why am I like that? Trying to understand yourself. And I don't know how helpful this is. So I rather go into, okay, so we know your self-talk right now is not helpful, is not encouraging you to go to take that loss and press that mouse button. What can we do instead that helps you to, or, you know, how can we transform your self-talk in such a way that helps you to take that action? At the same time, yes, we can look back and look at, so what is, and, and you know, I do a lot of work around where did we learn this behavior? Um, because it's helpful for traders to understand where did I learn this behavior of um, avoiding taking a loss, which is avoidance behavior, which is, um, um, you know, safe problem, which is um, 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 procrastination pr um, strategy, But how is that helpful when I know that? It's so much more helpful for my trader to turn a procrastination strategy into a taking action strategy. So yes, it is helpful and useful to know where that comes from, but it is not necessary to succeed. That's what I'm saying. And this is my beef with um, this tweet where it says, you have to know yourself and you have to do this work. I'm like, no, you don't have to. You can. And it helps. It's useful. But you don't have to. Like meditation. Also, look at your, what is your self-talk that makes it okay. So you lay in bed in the morning. You say you want to get up at five o'clock to go to the gym. Do you say to yourself, oh, it's so nice and cozy and warm in bed. I don't want to get up. I get another five minutes. Or do you say, it's nice and cozy in bed and I still get up because this is who I want to be. This is how I see myself. This is my self-image. If I watch a movie of myself, do I want to look at someone who lays in bed and is lazy and fat and you know unhealthy? Or do I want to look at myself and see that person that keeps her word that gets up no matter how she feels about it because there's a job to be done hmm. good point I get a lot of questions about discipline like every single day and yeah. I try to refer people to you as much as I can because I know you're good at that and you're good at, at, at explaining that and that's, that's key but what would you say to people who want to be able to master the discipline in trading, what would be the, the advice you can give them? Practice it. Practice discipline. Just because it's written in a trading book that you should be disciplined doesn't mean that you have that. 
So there's those innate innate traits that we have. Um, um, what's a trait? Um, so, for example, if you look at something like um, grit, um, courage, um, perseverance, um, focus, these are attributes. These are not traits. So traits is something that we are born with. Discipline is also an attribute. Um, so a trait is something that's genetic, and I can't think of something that's a trait right now, but it will come to me in a moment. Um, so when we look at attributes, that is something that can be developed. So when I work with a trader who comes to me and they say, I'm not disciplined, what always, 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 what I found is always driving this is the self-image that they can't be disciplined. They don't see themselves as someone who is disciplined. And that's where it starts, where I say, right now you're not being disciplined, but you can become someone who is. You need to believe that. And and so most traders don't believe that to begin with. And it's the same. I, I compare that with... Um, um, so I, I was working with a trader who, who owns a brewery, and he had exactly that ex um, ex experience. So he was doing the FTMO challenge, 10 times, passes every time to get into the prop trader challenge, but can't maintain. So as soon as he gets um, borderline, um, you know, I think you have a 10% a 1% drawdown policy or some sort of policy where if you cross that um, percentage drawdown, you are out. As soon as he gets close to that drawdown, he starts going on tilt. He's trying to force um, staying in it and, and that works in against him. Yeah. So that's the behavioral pattern. And um, he sees himself as someone who screws up. He doesn't see himself as someone who can do it. That was the self-image. And then I said to him, so um, when you have in your brew, so you want some rewards, some um, whatever they've been in brewing beer um, and you know for brewing a really good beer, and I said to him, did you ever have challenges that the beer didn't turn out the way you wanted it to turn out? And he said, um, yes, you know. I said, what was it? He said, the beer tasted bitter. I said, okay, so what did you do? Did you um, get down on yourself and like, oh, man, I can never make it. I'm a shit brewer. Um, you know, my damn father, he always um, put me down. Like, did you talk to yourself like that? And he laughed. And he said, no. And I said, so what did you do? Did you doubt that you can ever make it as a brewer and he said no I really knew that I can make it like I have no doubt so he had the self-belief and then we got to the conversation between the difference of self-belief and self-confidence and he said in that moment you know I had self-belief and self-confidence that I can make it in uh, you know fix that beer in trading I don't have that and I said okay so what is the difference tell me let's have a look at that so in trading the big difference was that he didn't have the self-belief in himself that even though he is not the trader that he wants to be, that he can be that trader. So that was the gap. In his business as a brewer, he had that belief from day one. He knew he can make it. So, okay, so that's really interesting. Where does that come from? Does it matter? So if you take that belief that you have as a brewer into your trading, and even though you are not at that level that you want to be, just believe that you can find a way, that there is a way, that it's possible. How would that change your interactions with the markets, your self-talk, your feelings about a losing trade? And then let's look at self-confidence. And I said to him, so when you had this um, problem with the beer, what gave you the confidence? And he said, I knew that I have the knowledge, the experience, and the resources to fix that beer. The knowledge I had because I studied what makes a beer a good beer. The um, the skill I had is because I have made really great beers and got awards for it. And the resources was because I know other brewers and I called them and I said, this is the problem I have with my beer. What, what would you do with that problem? How would you fix it? Do you know what the root cause could be? And I said, great. So when you had this conversation, how did you know where to look for the problem? I mean, you know, for me, I don't brew beer. So what could it be? And he said, well, there's only three ingredients. There is 
uh, sorry, there's only three areas that we can look at. One is the ingredients. Are the ingredients that I'm using for my beer the top-notch ingredients that I need to make that beer the way um, I want it to taste? Number two, it's the equipment. The equipment that I'm using to brew the beer. Is the equipment um, clean? Is the equipment um, high quality? Does the equipment work well? And then I get that beer that I um, that I know tastes good or tastes bitter or tastes sweet or tastes fruity, whatever the client wants. So let's take that to the context of trading. What are the ingredients? Let's first look at the equipment. The equipment in trading is what? Our brain, right? So most traders know better how their car, cars perform than how their brains work. The brain is not not something that is intangible. There is so much work now with, um, you know, Professor Huberman who explains how the brain works. Study how your brain works. Um, so the brain is simply the processing um, equipment for the ingredients that you put into the brain. And then whatever comes out the other side is feedback for you that maybe um, the ingredients were not the right ingredients. Maybe the equipment is um, faulty. So you need to look at what's going on in your brain. So if you have experienced trauma, that is something that I work on because I know someone who has experienced trauma, they have addictive behavior for two reasons. Number one, lack of dopamine. Um, and I learned that from Professor Huberman. I'm not a neuroscientist. And number two, it is um, because when someone is uh, has experienced trauma, they're in fight and flight. Fight and flight is the automatic behavior. And uh, we don't have access to the prefrontal cortex where the logical thinking happens. The prefrontal cortex is literally dark, um, like a dark room, and your amygdala is lit up like a Christmas tree. So this is something that needs to be worked on and, and, and resolved. So I'm, I'm working with um, a um, hedge fund trader at the moment um, who he's massively successful, right? He makes you know millions of dollars on a trade, but he also has experienced trauma. And he knows when that trauma is resolved that he can perform even better than that. That is a self-belief. He has a self-belief and a self-confidence, but he knows that something in his equipment is not working well, and so he needs to clean that up and needs to fix it. That's my job then. So we can also look at, um, with, a, with a brewer, um, maybe instead of putting, let's say we, we bake cupcakes, and maybe instead of putting sugar, you mistook the salt for sugar, and you put salt into your cupcakes, and then they taste yucky and salty rather than sweet. So was there human error interfering with your performance? Yeah. So um, look at trading as what are your ingredients? These are your thoughts, your attitude, your behavioral patterns, your discipline or lack thereof. You put that th your thoughts into your brain. Your brain processes those thoughts and out come the profits, the trading results. So it's really easy now to look at it, right? To find what is going on. What are your thoughts, Etienne? Yeah, well, a few things that came to my mind when, when you said all those things. So the first one is, it's crazy that one one area can have discipline and the other area doesn't have it. Like, you, you could be super disciplined, like, in, in business, but not in trading. Or you could be super disciplined in yeah. something else, sports, but not trading. So that's really interesting. Uh, you, you, you want to comment on that and why that is? or Self-image, yeah. Mm. So it's it's really the I can do it in one area but I can't do it in the other. Interesting. Yeah, that's Very that's always what I see. Always. They don't doubt that they can find a way that they can make it. And also I think trading on our own we don't have that positive reinforcement. So I asked Linda, or, you know, Linda saw me talk about um, about self-belief and lack thereof. And she said, wow, this is really interesting because when I was on the floor, even though I screwed up and even though um, I had a really hard task masters for my, um, for my backers, so every Friday, Linda had to explain to her financial backers why she took those trades or why she didn't take those trades. And then they told her 
how to improve or not to improve. And, and she said, even though they were really hard and tough on me, but they always told me that I have what it takes. There was always someone believing in me. And we don't have that. We just sit on right. our own with our feelings and thoughts and there is no um, reinforcement. There's no, um, um, no one who gives us a little nudge and says, yeah, you screwed up, but doesn't mean that it's the end. You can still do it. Then we don't spiral down into this uh, abyss of um, yeah, doubting ourselves. Mm -hmm. So how can you have that training? Because it's not really the role of a coach to do that, no? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, get a coach or a trading buddy and no one who gives you, feeds you bullshit and says, you can do it, you know, you're great, you're awesome. Um, it is someone who is realistic and says, you know, really says, yeah, you screwed up here. Not cool what you did, letting the trade run. And it doesn't mean that you can't do it. Let's have a look at what was going on here. What was the self-talk? What were the ingredients that went into your brain that made it okay to let that trade run and then created losses? Mm. And so the other thing you mentioned is, is the fact that you have to work with a trader to kind of bring back a new belief in trading that you didn't have. Now, how do you do that? How do you mm. create new beliefs in trading or in any other area? Yeah. So what I did with this guy, with my um, brewery trader, by the way, I just sent you um, a little PowerPoint um, picture on Skype. Maybe you can load it up. for. Okay. Um, so, um, so what I did with him is he didn't have that feeling um, in his trading. Yeah, and, and confidence is just, it's, it's just like, I don't know, state of mind feeling. So we needed to connect trading with knowing I can do it. And so I said, every time you have to self-doubt in your trading, I want you to think of brewing beer and tap into that feeling that you get when you brew beer. Every time and do it as many times as you can. And when you screw up in your trading, don't go down the path of, I'm such a loser, what's wrong with me? I'm the biggest idiot on earth. I will never get it. Go into, I'm going to find a way. I'm going to figure this thing out. I don't know how to do it right now, but I can learn it because there's others who do it. So number one, start, look at something that you're really good at in, in, in your other areas of life. And we all have that. So um, what I did, I was a really excellent show jumper on horses. I always say that. I always say, give me any horse, I can tame it. And if there's a horse I can't tame, I know that I can see that. So I won't get on the horse. Um, I'm also an excellent skier. I know you can put me on any mountain. I can get down that mountain unless I have to jump off a rock. I'm not good at jumping off rocks. So um, I might not look very elegantly, but I know how to get down that mountain. I know how to ski. So at the beginning, when I didn't have those feelings in my trading, I would um, have on my right-hand side, on my mouse pad, a photo of me winning a um, jumping competition, which was really high obstacles. So it was a really big um, competition for me and winning that was massive. So I still remember those feelings ingrained in me. And uh, on our right-hand side, so if you now understand how our brain works, right? Um, um, if you look at neuro linguistic programming, we have learned that if someone looks down to the right-hand side, they're connecting with their emotional world if someone looks up, they're vision, visualizing. If someone looks left and right, they're listening to their own thoughts or they're replaying someone saying something. So we can use how our brain works and say, um, so that's me drinking beer. I, I love a good beer. <laughs> um, awesome. So we know how our brain works as Etienne knows, because when Etienne was here in Melbourne, we, we were at that St. Kilda, Etienne, where you and I did the recording. Nice. So exactly that place, yeah. So when we know how our brain works, we can use that. And so I put that, emo that that picture of me winning that competition in my emotional part, the right-hand corner in, um, on my mouse pad. Now on the flip side, we also know that when we have the mouse on our right hand, that we are easier getting into the emotional part of our um, brain. 
So when we want to take a loss, we have to use our um, right hand side and look to the down, look to bottom right in order to um, um, work with, in order to to press that mouse. That our emotional areas of the brain are being triggered. So then it helps us um, to understand that how that can impact our ability to be disciplined. Yeah, so um, so again, this is what I did. I, I took this photo, put it on the right uh, bottom right hand side of my my brain, aka on my mouse pad, and started connecting those feelings of confidence and self belief to my trading just by using and understanding how my brain works. That's where you start. The second step was every time I'm like, oh man, I, I, I will never succeed. I'm such a loser. I can't have the dream life. I can't have what I want. I would then say, bullshit, I'm going to find a way. There are others who do it. I can do it too. I just, I, I, I'll figure it out. Right now, the ingredients that are put into my cake don't make my taste uh, cake tastes sweet. It makes my cake taste bitter. So all I need to do is figure out what the ingredients are to succeed in trading. And that's then where it starts. And then you start filtering for possibility and not filtering for where it doesn't work, where I suck, what mistakes I did. As so for example, um, um, looking at what are the trades that you do that you're really, really good at? What do most traders do? I'm sure that's just your experience as well. When you work with your traders, they look at where they suck. How could I do this mistake? What's wrong with me? So I was working with a trader who um, um, was in, in a US stock and did quite well in it, got out too early, got into a different um, store, into, into an index, Index didn't move. The moment he got out of this US stock, that stock started rallying up like crazy. And then he was like, damn it, what's wrong with me? You know, um, I missed out on all these profits. But then, and so he got into the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ was just um, delaying. The NASDAQ took a few days sideways and then it shot up like crazy. Now it's what, 14,600 or 700 and he got in at 13,500. So what we identified was that he can read the index much better because he explained to me he's using the DAX as a proxy and I don't know, right? He's using the DAX as a proxy and then looks at the ES and that gave him insights into what the EQ is going, uh, NQ is going to do. No idea, right? That was far beyond my, <laughs> my pay grade. But yeah, so then we saw that he doesn't have that context for looking and reading stocks. And that's why his decision-making process was um, not as good as the one for indices because he doesn't have that um, big picture understanding of how um, different areas impact each other. So Linda was, for example, saying, yeah, the rally right now is great, but there's no breaths. Who invented this word? I can't pronounce it. B-R-E-D-T-H, I think it is. Um, yeah. Yeah. In the, in the stocks. So I don't know how sustainable that is. In a nutshell, right? I hope I quote her correctly. Most traders don't know about this. Right? They only look at, oh, look, um, July, August, the market goes up. No, context. When the market went up July, August last year, there was a lot of breadth in, in, in the stocks as well. Yeah, so that's then skill and knowledge and understanding, which Linda has a lot. Linda has knows so much about the context. Did I answer your question in a roundabout way? Yes, yes. No, that was insightful, for sure. Yeah. Uh, we had a question here in the chat that you might want to answer. I believe you have yeah, only sure. one, but if you have, if you have any questions, you can ask comment below. The question, was, the question was about what is the good mentality to have when your results are mixed? When a few trades, with a few trades, back and forth, and not really making progress. Awesome question, Bronx. Thank you. So, your results are mixed. If we look at our brewery, the beer is tasting bitter. Blah. I like fruity beer. <laughs> I want fruity beer, not bitter beer. So, now we can look at what are the ingredients of our trading? What is our equipment? 
And is there human error? Did the um, um, trader mistake salt for sugar? So with the losing trades, what I would do, what I would work with you on is number one, look at these losing trades and look at how specifically did you lose those trades. Um, was your entry timing wrong? So you got into early. Your idea was great, but you got into early. Um, so I was working with someone um, who um, got into a tanker stock. And tanker stock didn't move. He got out of it. And then yesterday they had a takeover announcement and it just went 40% up. So his timing was out. His idea was great. His timing was out. Um, is it that you lost because you got out too early? So the, like this guy, right? So there was um, a great setup. It didn't move. You got out and then it moved afterwards. So how specifically did you lose? And um, I then look for a pattern. Is it that you mostly lose because your timing is out? You get in at the wrong time. So your trading idea is correct, but you get in out of in the wrong time. The second part is I look at um, your exits. Did you get out following your um, exit strategy to the T? Or did you get out not following your exit strategy? So all these give us insights into your ingredients, your mindset, how you think. Um, did you get scared like the straight I just spoke about and got out because you couldn't deal with the um, with the stress of being in the trade and it not moving anymore? Um, or did you get out because you wanted to get into another trade? Or did you get out because your exit was triggered? Really, really important. If you get out because your exits got triggered, and you have a string of losing trades, maybe you need to adjust your um, risk management to the market context. So at the moment, we have a massive volatility. I mean, look at the DEX. DEX is beautiful at the moment. I love it. Um, so DEX pattern is at the moment opening, runs down, then runs all the way back up, and then runs down a little. That has been the pattern the whole week. So now that I understand the pattern of the DAX, I can trade that until that pattern changes. Um, so do you understand the pattern that the market gives you at the moment? And does your strategy have an edge in that market context? That's what I would look at. So for example, um, again, if you look at the DAX, the hourly had a bearish engulfing pattern. In the past, it would have been a reason for me to go short. Um, but that was exactly where it stopped and started rallying back up. So in understanding how the DAX behaves um, with this increased volatility, I don't take those big picture setups anymore. I only take setups on a smaller time frames because, again, volatility is massive. So you need to adjust your exit strategy on the volatility. So you can see how I really dive into each and every losing trade and understand what was the pattern behind. Um, I, I was working with a trader and we identified that um, – so he is an American guy trading the ES, and he says if the market, uh, the S goes down first and then goes up, he finds his entries really, really easily. And this is what we saw again in the last week. The European session was driving the market down, and then the US session would drive the market up. Um, but if the market goes up first, the ES specifically, and then down, and then up, he finds it hard to find his long entries. So understand how you perform best, which patterns you can read best. And either um, perform accordingly, just take those setups, um, or you um, look at learning new um, skills like, okay, so now I need to learn if the market comes down first and then goes up, that I can read this market as well. So I hope this is um, useful for you, Bronx, to understand. Maybe it is just a time where you're not making progress. So you're going sideways because the market's not going um, well for you. But then the time comes again where you have a massive jump up because the market is more suited for your trading style. Yeah, go to the beach and and you know sunbake if there's no wind to sail, basically.
or clean the boat. <laughs> yeah, yes, I hope that answered your point. question. I think that probably did. And on that line, I think a lot of people trade too many things as well. Like they trade, they try to trade too many pairs, too many assets, instruments, whatever. Yeah. And you just mentioned that being able to understand how one thing behaves and how one thing, one thing moves, I think that's really, really valuable because most traders don't, don't do that. But the ones who are successful, I think, do that quite well. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, understanding seasonality. So gold and silver mm. going into season now. Um, understanding how the dollar index impacts um, the the US dollar pairs. Um I, I see that a lot as well, Etienne, where traders are just too much surface level. They're being taught you just need to trade from one level to the next. And it's like there's so much more to it. Yeah. Um, and you need to practice and train. Go on trading sim or um, on, on some sort of um, live market replay on trading view and practice your setups. Again, mm. I see traders not doing it and it's not rocket science. Exactly. It, it takes time, yeah. but it's definitely useful. Yeah, and you know everything takes time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. How to overcome self sabotage after a massive million dollar loss? Ha. Huh. Yeah, that's a really good one. Hmm. So having a massive million dollar loss is a trauma, Jason, and um, you first need to find peace in what you did, um, how you created this loss. In order to find peace in that, you need to again understand how did that loss occur? What specifically did you do or not do that created that loss? Did you have a loss because the market gapped? Did you have a loss because you over leveraged? Um, that, that's one of my, ah oh man, vices. I like to put on too many in too big positions because, you know, I get quite um, feisty with my trading and then I need to rein myself back in and cut my position size in half. Um, so how specifically did you create that loss? And on one hand, it's really, really painful because you have to go back and understand what you did. And, and um, that is almost like physical pain to me. But it is what needs to be done. It's like when you have, um, I was working with a trader. Uh, he's um, He was a, a basketball player. And he told me how um, his um, the guy in, in, in the other team took his elbow and hit him in the face and just cracked his nose o over. Oh, my God. He said it was such pain. And then the coach took him from the court and <laughs> said, oh, let me have a look. And then he cracked it back in without any anesthetics, just no, without any warning. And he said he almost fainted. It was so painful. So um, it is it is like that. It's like, your, you know, your nose is out of whack and now you need to crack it back in place. That's how painful it is looking at your loss. So understand exactly how specifically you created that loss so that you can put um, behaviors and safeguards into place to not do that again. And as I said, it's like when you have a loss, it's like when you break your arm, you need to put it in a cast, you need to heal first. And um, I got complacent and was not watching my trading partners and they deviated from my strategy. Yeah, so the questioner, yeah, you know, got complacent. I know um, that's that's also a tricky one. We get complacent so easily when we, when we are successful. Yeah. Um, and I have seen that as well where um, someone, when you work as a team and you trust your teammates to do the right thing and then they are only human as well, right? So Tolsky said, uh, um, Tolstoy said, um, control, uh, uh, trust is good, control is better. And I live by that principle. I'm a control freak. So to a certain level, I trust people. But when it comes to business, I don't trust. Trust, I control. And not because I don't trust those people. It's because I know they're human, just like I am human. And we all have our flaws and we all can make mistakes. So, um, yeah, you know, that is something that um, you now have learned where don't trust people. They're human. And I have this friend and she always, she just crosses the road trusting the cars stop. 
I don't do that. Even when the light is green, I always look, is there a car? And how many, like twice now, I got saved from being hit by a car because the car didn't see the red light and just, or ignored the red light and just went through. So it's the same thing. Um, so you need to heal first and then remind yourself, and this is what Linda did, right? So Linda had a big loss because of human error. And then she is like, all right, I just need to focus. I have an amazing team around me. Linda Rushke, I talk about the market wizard. She said, I have an amazing team around me. I know how to find trades. I know I have that skill. I, um, I just need to buckle down. I need to make $200,000 a day back so that I catch up on that loss so that my investor, so that was when she had the fund, can get their, um, their premium at the end of the month. And she did. Yeah, so she just, she has this self-belief. And even if she didn't have it, she would talk herself into, I can do this. And she did. So I hope this is helpful, Jason. You know, there's a little bit more to it, but that's where I would start. How can I do that better? How can I avoid making the same mistake again? Yeah, and talk it through with someone because there's also a lot of shame that we have when we make those mistakes and being able to speak to someone about it. That's what AA is about, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous. When people find a space where they can openly talk about the shameful mistakes that they made, they can start healing that shame. Where they know they're not being judged, where they know there's other people who make the same mistakes. And, and then only when that shame is being healed then they can start um, letting go of that um, addiction to, to alcohol. It's the same in trading. If we still have shame around our trading mistakes, we will try to fix them and we try to force it and, and make it worse in a nutshell. That's how it works. That's why traders go on tilt. Yeah. Cool. Uh, maybe you want to ask a question here before we wrap it up. Mm -hmm. uh, the question here is about how do we get our mind ready uh, before trading? I mean, before I start my trading platform, how do I control my anxiety and calm my mind down? Awesome question, Annika. Thank you. Um, so I'm not a big fan of controlling anxiety. I'm always saying if your mind or your body talks to you, you listen to it. Have a look at what your anxiety is about. You know, I was working with a trader and he got... Um, he got a lot of anxiety in his life, social anxiety. As a child, he was diagnosed with ADHD or ADD, whatever it's called. And I believe the more I work with traders, many traders or many people who get diagnosed with ADD, they actually have social anxiety and they override the social anxiety by being active. So they don't need to feel that fear. So I would... If I were you, work on two levels. Number one, really dive deep into understanding what your anxiety is about and, and healing that anxiety. Um, number two, yes, get your mind ready. So what we have learned from Professor Huberman is your mind doesn't learn in the moment of learning. So as you sit here and listen to me, this is not the moment you learn. It is when you get off the call of that um, YouTube life and you take five minutes and you look, you gaze into the difference and you really let it settle in your mind, your unconscious processes the information and transforms it into learning. It's really important to know for trading because what I would recommend you is that if you have a lot of anxiety and, and um, you haven't had a chance to deal with it as yet, one major um, strategy to deal with it is to be well prepared to really, really well prepared. So make sure that you look at the market, look at your charts the night before or a few hours before you trade. Um, so you get familiar with the market. Your mind does a lot of unconscious processing. It's really weird. Um, the unconscious competence is, I don't know if you have the same experience at the end, but sometimes I'm like, should have a look at the market. And then, you know, I don't know, it's three o'clock in the morning, I wake up and then there's this perfect pin bar set up that I really like trading. It's like, yeah. how did my unconscious know that? There must be something greater at place. And I'm not the only one. I know a lot of traders who have that experience. 
So really make sure that you prepare yourself well in terms of um, having your strategy um, really clearly laid out. Right? So write your strategy like a baking recipe in like an operations manual into a step-by-step -step way um, that you can follow. Right? So that gives you structure, that gives you certainty. So as someone who has anxiety, we need to create as much certainty as possible in their lives. Um, a lot of traders who have anxiety, also what I see is they have a lot of uncertainty in their lives. Um, not enough money in the bank, um, crappy relationships, um, broken relationships with the parents. Yeah. So um, if that is the case, it doesn't matter. Look at what gives you certainty, what makes you feel safe and create that as well. Um, for some people, it is meditation that gives them certainty. For others, it gives them anxiety. Um, What else? Um, eat walnuts and um, Brazil nuts. So Brazil nuts, they give us um, heavy, happy hormones. Again, I learned that from Professor Huberman. Um, the more happy hormones like dopamine, serotonin, you can create outside of trading, the less you need to get that from trading. Yeah, so... When we trade and we have profits, that makes us feel good. Oh, my God, I feel that feeling of booking a profit, right? When the market has been running and it's like the moment comes, and it's like, yep, I'm out. Especially when I got it at a turning point, you know, I feel like superwoman, wonder woman, right? It feels good. But if we only have trading that gives us those feel-good feelings, then if we don't get that feel-good feeling, then we start chasing it. We become needy to the markets. So again, look at many, many other areas, as many legs that you can put underneath this table of feel-good feelings as you can. Um, that's what I would do as well. I hope this is useful. So um, I know it was a little bit disjointed, but because I had to think it through. Um, yeah, a lot I of progressed. pieces of advice there for sure. So if you want to watch a replay, you can always do that. And you're going to get a lot of advice from, from this. Yeah. Awesome, Mandy. Where can people find you if they want to connect with you, get some coaching or learn more from you? Um, so my website, highperformancetrading.com.au, I'm actually just in the process of rebuilding it and moving everything on Kajabi. Um, so um, I don't know if I have um, contact me, but um, yeah, uh, on my website, uh, on Twitter, mpx underscore trader. Um, Jason says, take better blockers. I don't know what backup better blockers Uh, to be honest. Do you know what beta blockers are, Etienne? No. Okay. So, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter and, and contact me on Twitter. Um, so, so Bronx said um, his stop losses are too tight and get stopped out too much. I see that a lot at the moment. So um, traders who had used, for example, ATR as a stop loss calculation, they're doing better because ATR takes into consideration the... Um, the um, volatility but traders who have a fixed stop loss they they're keep being stopped out a lot at the moment so look at the market context and how you can adjust and how you do that is go on live market review and oh, sorry go back to your old trades through all your losing trades and look at what happened after you got out of the trade did it continue in the loss and you're like thank god i got out Or um, did it turn around and go up? So that will help you to identify how to adjust your stop loss. Stop losses can be a monetary, technical, a combination, or a time stop loss. So um, definitely don't go naked and say no stop loss. Um, it is a really fine line. And only if you know you have the discipline to get out when you say you get out, then do the naked thing. Um, otherwise, you're going to kill yourself. Um, it's an avoidance strategy. Better blockers for performance anxiety. Yeah, to control stress. Um, Jason, this is not how I want to live my life because then um, I'm a control freak, right? If I take better blockers or all that jazz, then I am dependent on an external um, um, input to control myself and to manage myself in order to succeed in life we have to take leadership of ourselves first 
I want to learn to be the best leader I can of myself. And if I have anxiety, I need to deal with my anxiety. Maybe my anxiety is because I'm not well prepared. Then I need to go and prepare myself. Or maybe my anxiety is because I don't know how to deal with the situation. Then I need to figure out how to deal with the situation. Um, so, but that's me. I'm not saying this is right or wrong. If it works for you, rock on, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Adrenaline, again, awesome. it's feedback for you. It's your, so Jason says it's um, management of adrenaline. If your body produces adrenaline, it, it talks to you. It means something. So for me, this is just dealing with the surface level. Um, I, again, it's just what I do. I go dive deep and say, why does my body think it has to produce um, adrenaline? But whatever works, mm -hmm. right? Whatever brings you the results. Awesome. There you go. Thank you everyone for joining us live today. We appreciate you being here, of course, and counting with your question. That's been awesome to hear, and we are happy to help, of course. And we'll catch you back here in the next video pretty soon. Thank you so much, Etienne. I really, really appreciate you putting these on. Awesome.